So over the course of the last, the previous two weeks, I get to do again today what I've done, which is to just spend just a brief couple of minutes with you. Today I get to introduce somebody that I met, I think, on the very um, first or second Sunday I was here. And uh, he kind of stood out from the crowd, but not for the obvious reason. He stood out because he had this strange smile on his face. And I came to find out that that's just who he is. He just walks around life with a strange smile on his face. And that's a beautiful thing. When I met him in a coffee shop to learn more about him and the ministry work that he was involved with, he walked in the door with that same strange, endearing smile on his face. So the gentleman to which I'm referring, his name is Marcus Floyd, and I apologize for the misprint. We were just trying to keep your undercover Christian status at the university in check. So Marcus Floyd graduated from VCU with a bachelor's degree in exercise science, which I think means he likes to run, but I'm not sure. Afterwards, he completed um, Chi Alpha's national campus ministry in training program and for the last five years has served as the campus missionary associate on the Richmond Chi Alpha team ministering to college students at both VCU and Virginia Union University. So basically he is on the front lines. That's the way I think of it anyway because he is, he is willing to put himself in places that perhaps many of us might be a bit nervous to go. He goes right into the lion's den proudly representing Jesus Christ. As you know, I have a soft spot for missionaries because, truth be told, I don't have the guts to be one. That's just being truthful. So I'm thrilled that over the course of the last month, we've heard from a couple others, and I suspect that today will be just as enlightening as those were. Please help me welcome to share the message with you today, Mr. Marcus, Floyd. Good morning, Four Mile Creek Baptist Church. Good morning. I liked that last worship song. Good little groovy, little dancing. <laughs> so, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It is truly an honor to be here, and um, I was sharing a little bit in the back of, oh, a little bit of feedback. Can you hear me? Okay, great. Um, as I walked in the, the doors this morning, and as I've walked in the doors previously, uh, I just think of the countless faithful people who have been a part of this church, and all of us here, at some point, in our journey in life, someone introduced us to Jesus. We're here because someone else came before us. And that truly is a miracle. Someone came and had the bravery, even if they were nervous or scared, shared with us Jesus, our Savior. Could have been a brother, sister, mother, step-parent. No matter what, that person, those people were faithful to Jesus. And that's why we're all here. And so I just wanted to just, just recognize that right now, just a privilege and honor it is to be here. And uh, like Pastor Mike said, um, I have the honor to serve as a campus missionary uh, with Richmond Kyle for serving students at Virginia Commonwealth University and Virginia Union. And so just to set the record straight a little bit, Chi Alpha, we're not a fraternity or sorority. A lot of times people get that confused. They're like, wait, are you guys a fraternity? It's like, no. But if you're looking for brothers and sisters, we're the place to come hang out with, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that's something that we always like to, to let people know of. And it comes from 2 Corinthians 5.20. Uh, it's a translation from the Greek, but basically Paul says, uh, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal to us, through us, be reconciled to God. And that's what we're all about, being Christ's ambassadors on the university campus and training, equipping students to do the same. And so this fall, I will be entering my sixth year in campus ministry. Time is flying by. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, so it's just been an amazing, an amazing journey. And this past year, with everything, the pandemic and everything that's going on, I'm finding more and more why 
why Christ ambassadors are needed on the university campus. It's so needed. It is so needed. I have the honor and privilege to, uh, to do that. And so how do I serve as a campus ministry? Well, I meet with students where they are, uh, training and equipping them to love God, to love people, and to pass it on. And not only in the university setting, but also when they graduate as well as when they go into the marketplace, or maybe they'll become a missionary, wherever they go, that they would be missional, to be Christ's ambassadors, to be his representatives wherever they go, to make disciples that make disciples that make disciples wherever they go. And so the type of students that I come across with on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm on campus uh, are the students who are followers of Jesus, who are like, hey, I don't want to put my faith on the back burner, but that when I come to university, I want to be engaged my relationship with Jesus to grow alongside other people and to make a difference, to make an impact. Those are the students that we encounter. We also encounter, I encounter, the skeptic. Those who are like, hey, I've been, uh, you know, grown up in the, the Christian faith, but is that something that's relevant now that I'm older? And the answer is yes. Jesus is always relevant to every culture, to every generation. It's coming alongside them to help them to see what are the steps that Jesus wants them to take now that they're at the university setting, and how they can be missional as well. There's also the non-religious, the student with a secular worldview who's like, God is not relevant to my life, and he never has been. It's coming alongside them and showing them the gospel in community. And so many students have been a part of our ministry, a part of my ministry of just seeing God reflected in Christ-like community and their worldview and their heart is changed through Christ and community. And then there are students from various different faith backgrounds. Uh, Virginia Commonwealth University has uh, many uh, international students who practice different faiths and they are a part of our ministry as well. Um, it's the awesome thing that we get to say, that I get to say a lot of times is belonging before you believe. There's power in belonging before you believe in community. And so those are the various different types of students that I've come across with when it comes to discipleship and ministry, and it's an honor to serve all of them. And being a missionary has been a blast over these past five years and going into year six. But 10 years ago, if you would have told me that I was going to be a campus missionary, I'd be like, are you crazy? What? No. <laughs> what happened here? Um, because honestly, growing up, I uh, wasn't, I didn't have a Christian background. I didn't go to church. I didn't do any of the things that people would, you know, imagine that a follower of Jesus would, would do. Um, and so I want to share with you this morning that through my story, how we are all called um, to be on mission for Jesus. And through that, we are invited into God's story through his son, Jesus. So growing up, like I mentioned a couple of seconds ago, uh, I thought a relationship with God was just doing things, following a script, be nice to people, don't steal anything, make great grades in school, be successful, however you define that. What does it mean to be successful? I had this script in my mind that if I do certain things, then God would love me, that he would take care of me. It was not the gospel. It was some secular worldview that if I have a certain amount of points, then God will be proud of me. He put my name on the refrigerator. It was not the gospel. But as I got older, I recognized my own brokenness and the brokenness in the world around me. And it completely flipped my understanding of God upside down. If I'm doing these things. Why aren't good things happening to me? It completely turned everything upside down. And so in elementary school, middle school, and high school, and over time, I just grew tired on assumptions of who Jesus was and who he is. I wanted to know for myself. And I didn't have a personal Bible to, to read from, but being an internet savvy person, which I'm not that savvy with the internet, even though I'm millennial. <laughs> I'm a disappointed when it comes to internet savviness. What I did find was the YouVersion Bible app, and I downloaded it on my phone, and I started reading the Gospels for myself, and it changed everything. That God isn't distant, he's near, he's personal, he's Lord of all. And my understanding of who I am and who Jesus is, it changed everything for me. He met me in my brokenness, 
and seeing what he did in his ministry, discipling, ministering, being arrested, crucified, dying and rising from the dead and seated right to the next hand to the right hand of the Father, seeing the gospel story played out, it just it just changed my heart. And for me personally, uh, I was never the same after that. It was in my bedroom, just reading from the U Version Bible app. It was incredible. So not all technology is bad. Technology gets a bad rap these days for good reason, but it's not all bad out here, y'all. <laughs> and so through encountering Jesus and reading the word and reading the Bible, I had to come to realize in my head and in my heart that Jesus rescued me. And he was inviting me to be a part of his family, to bring his kingdom and his goodness here on earth. I was done living the script that I wrote for my own life. I chose to be a part of the redemption story that God is writing here today. The first thing I want to point out uh, as I'm here is being on mission for Jesus means that we fully depend on Jesus to fill our hearts. Jesus shared with his disciples at the end of his ministry what relationship with him looks like and with the Father that is personal and it's joyful. If you have your Bibles, you can go to John chapter 15, verses 5 through 10. John chapter 10, verses, John chapter, John chapter 15, verses 5 through, uh, excuse me, 9, 5 through 9. Jesus tells his disciples, I'm the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now, remain, remain in my love. In this parable, Jesus reveals to his disciples who he is and who they are in this loving relationship with. It's with him. And that this would never change. That Jesus is the vine, which brings this picture of sustenance and nu- nutrients giving out to the rest of the plant. And the disciples were the branches. It's the picture of receiving dependency, reliance. Jesus shared this parable with his disciples at the end of his ministry. In this parable, Jesus shows two promises. One, to remain in him means that we will produce fruit. That when we remain in him, we will produce fruit. And then number two, to not remain in him means to, to be away from the source of nutrients and life, to be disconnected from the vine. The source is Jesus and only him. For us today, like the disciples, in order to be on mission, we have to be connected to the source, Jesus, and only Jesus. And to remain in him means that we receive his word in the scriptures, receiving from the story of God in the scriptures, and allowing his story to be integrated into our story for him to take over. And as as we remain in him, his words remain in us. And as his word remains in us, our thoughts and our desires become aligned with his, breaking fruit in our lives and through our lives. And all these things are occurring through the love of God. Being on mission means that Jesus, it means that we fully rely on Jesus and allowing him to fill our hearts. So what story are you living in? Is it the gospel story? For me, uh, growing up, it was me relying on my own self. That was my story, to rely on myself, to, to, to earn God's love, which can never be earned. It's by his grace and his grace alone. Is it putting on a mask like I did, pretending that I can define what it means um, to live a life that is pleasing to God? I miss the grace of receiving the work that Jesus has done on the cross for me and that I was a sinner and that the world is broken. The stories we live by shape who we are. As people redeemed by Jesus, let's live by the true story of God redeeming our hearts through the gospel. 
The second thing I want us to look at is being on mission for Jesus means that we follow him in community. Being on mission for Jesus means that we follow him in community. So at the end of my senior year of high school, I dive into the Bible. Jesus encounters me as I'm reading his word. I'm like, oh my goodness, God, you are so good. I'm going to follow you for the rest of my life. And that was great, but I didn't have community. I was a lone wolf by myself. Uh, I had a lot of questions that started running through my head. Okay, I'm going to VC. Like, how do I get plugged into a church? There's campus ministry stuff. There's Bible study. That sounds really scary. What do I do? What do I do? I was missing out on the blessing of community, and I was trying to do this whole life of following Jesus as a lone wolf. I loved Jesus, but I didn't know how to get be a part of a Christian community. I saw campus ministries out at VCU, but I was really scared because I was like, you guys are super Christians. I'm just like level one Christian, so I'm just going to like run away from you guys and do my own thing. <laughs> and things were coming to my mind, like what am I supposed to wear? Like, what? I had so many irrational fears, but those are the actual fears that I had, and I'm not the only person. There are people, there are college students today that are like, how does one be a part of a church community? So it wasn't just me. And so these are the hiccups that I had. And so my freshman year and sophomore year, I'm doing life alone. But then my sophomore year, spring semester, as I'm walking through uh, the compass at VCU, and you guys know the there's like certain students that have like a normal size backpack, which is a few books, notebook, pen. I was not that guy. <laughs> So think, think of the student who's like really stressed out, walking to class with a giant backpack. Y'all know the students I'm talking about, right? So picture that student times three the size of that backpack. That was me, everyone. <laughs> I'm running late to physiology lab. I'm like, I need to get to class. And on the corner of my eye, I see these group of people just like throwing out Frisbees. And I'm like, oh, stay away from me, stay away from me. I'm trying to get to class. I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. <laughs> And they threw a Frisbee to me, and I caught the Frisbee. And on the Frisbee was, love God, love people, pass it on. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. But I don't want to talk to you guys. I'm just going to put this in my backpack. I'm going to run straight to physiology lab. And I did. And when I got home, I honestly did not take a look at the Frisbee, really. I just put it on my bookshelf because I was like, I've got tests, exams to take. I'm trying to get through college. And so then finally... At uh, the end of the school year and into the summer, I'm continuing to read in God's word. I'm praying and all these things, and I'm really growing in my relationship with Jesus. Um, but God really puts on my heart this question, Marcus, do you trust me? I'm like, yes, Lord, I trust you. And then that, this, this uh, uh, question came up of, do you trust the people that I've placed in your life? And I was like, oh, wow. Wow. Okay, Lord, <laughs> I see you're, you're, you're pushing me to walk towards community, but what does that look like? So a couple more months, not a couple more months, like a couple more weeks come by, and the school year is starting up for junior year. I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm going to trust you with getting involved in community. And so what community do I be a part of? What campus ministry? I don't know. How do I do these things? And so me, using my limited tech savviness of the Internet, I start looking up the VCU uh, website and looking at the different campus ministries, and I see all the different ones, and Chi Alpha comes up. I'm like, hmm, I have heard of Chi Alpha. Where have I heard of Chi Alpha? And so I start looking around in my book bag and all these other different places, and then I look at my bookshelf, and the Frisbee, which I still have today, was on there. Love God, love people, pass it on, Chi Alpha. It's like, huh, okay, Lord, I, I see what you're doing here. This is, um, this is my burning bush moment, I see. <laughs> and so I looked at that phrase and was like, all right, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I've never been a part of a campus ministry. I've never been a part of a community that, that loves you in this way. So I'm going I'm to try this out. And it changed everything. As a college student in Chi Alpha, I grew in my relationship with Jesus I was on mission together with people in the community, men and women who were having the same dream. Yes, going through college, getting the degree, but it was more than just a degree. It was making Jesus known on the college university and even beyond that as well. And to this day, I know the group of people who were handing out Frisbees 
but I can't pinpoint the exact person that threw this Frisbee to me, but I'm gonna keep this forever because it's a reminder to me of what God can do when we're obedient to him and being on mission, even in the mundane. I have this label of spring semester 2014 because I think eventually, many years from now, the details are gonna get fuzzy, but I never wanna forget. I never wanna forget God's faithfulness. Being on mission for Jesus means that we follow him in community. In the Gospel of Matthew, in chapter 28, Jesus is resurrected from the grave, victorious over the enemy, death, and sin. And he is with the 11 disciples in Galilee. He gives them the Great Commission. Jesus tells them in verse 19, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. I love this because Jesus is with his disciples of the community he formed. You could say his small group of 11 guys, 11 people. He reminds them that he himself has all authority. That is assuring and that is powerful. His command to the disciples to go and make disciples as well of all nations far beyond Galilee, people of different backgrounds and cultures, teaching them to obey his teachings and who he is and that Jesus promised to be present with them. I want to remind all of us this morning that this is the same great commission that we have today. That as followers of Jesus that we all have to make disciples, to be missional. And so why did I decide to become a campus missionary at the end of my senior year of college? It would have made much more sense, sense, <laughs> to go into occupational therapy school, to uh, get that doctorate, to be at MCV, doing the great thing. It was a great, great option, but it wasn't what God had in mind. I experienced what God had did what God did in my life through Chi Alpha and all the people that poured into my life. These were men and women on the journey with me, people uh, younger than me, people older than me, different stages of life, missionaries that were further along in their, in their faith walk with Jesus. It was people in my church community that impacted me as well. All these experiences pointed to me that God was doing so much more than just a degree that I had and that God burned in me, in my heart, this desire that I still have today to have every single college student that I encountered to have an experience that I had, to be able to encounter Jesus in community, to have hearts transformed in a powerful and significant way, that it wasn't just gonna end with me, that I was gonna carry the baton and open up one more door, have one more chair for another Marcus like me who was searching for community, who had so many questions, so many questions, a laundry list of questions. But the Lord answered all of those in the context of community. What would it look like if we all recognized that God is writing his grand story of redemption for all of humanity? And he wants to use all of us, not just some of us. First, by being with him abiding with Jesus, spending extravagant time with Jesus on a daily basis, having our hearts formed, it's a heart that looks like his, having his desires, his plans, his mission for the world, not just our lives, but also being on mission together in community because a life following Jesus isn't a life following Jesus alone. He's given us each other our strengths, our talents, our experiences. He uses all of those things, and when we give it to him humbly, he will use every ounce of it. Our God is not wasteful. He uses everything. The reality is we're all called to live out the Great Commission. There's no A team or B team, varsity, junior varsity. We're all on the same team. Each one of us has a circle of influence that God has strategically placed us in to make an impact. He wants you to introduce people to him in our homes, 
Our homes are the mission field. Our workplaces are the mission field. Our friendships are the mission field. And yes, when done well, our social media accounts can be the mission field. Let's just be kind in the direct messages and the comments. <laughs> Let's represent Jesus there as well. This frisbee, it's not magical, like it can't float or anything like that. But every time I look at it, I'm reminded that in some way, metaphorically, all of us have a frisbee. Every single one of us has a frisbee. Our vocation, our experiences. We have gifts and talents that if we are intentional with it, the Lord can use it to bring him glory and to make disciples, to take what's hurting and broken and making it healed and whole through the power of Jesus. He can do it. We just have to trust him with it, all of it. Some, some questions that I want to leave, with, uh, that I wanna leave um, with you guys are, back to that first question, what story are you living today? Is it the gospel story? Where can you be a Christ ambassador today? And how do you see your neighbor? Do you see your neighbor as, uh, <laughs> oh, you're, you're blocking my way, I'm trying to get home or I'm trying to get to work, or do we see people as inconveniences or do we see them as divine opportunities to introduce people to our Lord and Savior? God can use the people that we're around to advance his kingdom in powerful ways. I just have to have my eyes open. We, all of us, just have to have our eyes open. It's the same thing at the university experience. There are college students, you know, walking with their, you know, ear pods in and stuff, you know, got the walk, they look cool. There's no one that's too cool for the gospel. There's no one that's too cool for the gospel. Have a long enough conversation with no distractions. Students begin to open up their hearts. That, that, that hole that only Jesus can fill. As much as people, the college students, try to you know, bolster themselves up, every single one of them at VCU and Virginia Union need the gospel hope of Jesus. And all of us, we all have opportunities to be missional. Number one, we just need to abide with Christ, to allow his heart to transform us to see the way that he sees, to be immersed in his love, and also to recognize that we really are in this together, and that when we're together and when we're focused, we can do infinitely more than what we can do alone. So thank you so much for my Creek Baptist Church family. I really appreciate it sharing this with you this morning, and uh, I wanna wrap up by saying a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, you are good, you are holy, and you are powerful. Through your son, Jesus, we are made whole. Through your son, Jesus, we, we get to surrender our stories for our lives and be integrated into your grand story of redeeming our world. What is broken, made whole. What, it, what was dying brought back to life. And Lord, we, we thank you, we praise you that you invite us into your story lovingly. And we didn't deserve it, I didn't deserve it. But you've invited us, Lord. We say thank you. And so Lord, I pray that as we leave here today, that you just put this burning passion in our hearts to see our world changed, for your kingdom to advance, for flourishing to, to occur upon your rule and reign and authority. Help us to recognize the frisbees that we have and to not beat ourselves up for the frisbees that we don't have, but to recognize what you have given us. Help us to steward it well, to give you glory, to give you honor. We love you, Jesus, and it's in your powerful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.